Welcome to part number two for Oracle Chat. Um, I promised a follow-up video. Um, this is roughly 60 days uh, since we got the machine. Um, and I do have some thoughts to share. Uh, do I still like it? Uh, overall, yes, I do. Um, I was looking at some of the comments um, under the original video. Some of them portrayed to uh, the finish of the machine. Uh, this is the, the sea salt variant. Um, some of you asked, um, uh, can I keep it uh, clean looking? Does it get dirty easily? Not necessarily. It's a very durable finish. Um, we had also other machines in, in this finish, uh, like the, the Touch and Press. And I believe there was a variant with the Barista Pro, which I really liked back in the day. Uh, this one is very, very, uh, very, very good, even though majority is, of course, uh, plastic. And even from a machine at $2,000, well, you can really expect uh, totally stainless uh, steel uh, a body. There are obviously elements that are anodized, which are which are metal. Sometimes I don't know if if, uh, if the actual shell is metal and it's just anodized, or it's just plastic and just you know it's uh, it's made of a few different components. This part always feels uh, very cool to touch, so I would expect maybe it's a it's a thin sheet of aluminum, but I might be wrong. Definitely, the top is is typical room temperature, so I would expect this to be plastic um, going back to uh, what we like so far what, uh, the major godsend is always the fill port <laughs> you can you can laugh at this whole thing but uh, refilling any other Brevo machine from the back especially if it's flushed against the wall it's been always a chore you have to pull it out uh, take the tank out uh, fill it out with water then put it back in and hopefully without making a splash here it's much much easier of course, uh, there are downsides of the, of the machine of this size, and they wanted to keep it um, small, is that the tank does not hold a lot of water. So you might do four or five drinks, including a, a few um, back flushes, or maybe just uh, rinse the portafilter and group uh, head with water, and it will very, very quickly go to, uh, go to zero. So keep in mind that you have to refill it quite often. The lights are always catching my attention. It's it's nice to have. It's such a subtle thing to have uh, to have two LEDs pointing down at the section. So if I flip the lights, you know, it, it gives that nice uh, that's my, that nice glow and atmosphere in the kitchen. Especially if you if you want to do um, a drink maybe late at night and uh, it's pitch black, you can still see the machine. That's nice. Um, yeah. The, the controls are still great. The, um, the screen quality is awesome. Although I, I do wish maybe that the, the cover on the display was, was glass and not plastic. It can scratch if you use um, a harsher cloth. So please be careful. Um, I remember saying that there were problems with Wi-Fi, which I, I basically did eliminate them all. Um, it was kind of on um, my fault, <laughs> even though it wasn't clearly advertised on Bravo's website and their customer service was, was, was not very helpful. So if you add this machine to Wi-Fi, uh, let me just go back. See, <laughs> I changed something because I don't pay attention. Yeah, the machine is very sensitive. So you want to be very careful with, uh, with scrolling. Let's go back to Wi-Fi, it's currently on my IoT network and it stays, thank God, it stays connected now. Um, before that, it would disconnect every time I, I disconnect the machine. So if you're adding it to Wi-Fi, make sure your Wi-Fi does not have for, uh, for its security, WPA3 uh, enabled. If it, if it does, it will, it will have problem with the built-in radio uh, on this unit. So for any um, Wi-Fi you have out there, make sure you have WPA slash WPA2 or just WPA2 and leave it there. Uh, that will ensure the machine always stays connected. Um, I, would, I would like to have more transparency from Bravo when it comes to software updates. You can't query 
the software updates uh, yourself. You just are, you're basically are on the mercy of whenever they release something for your country, it's going to be available. I know that um, our German friends uh, and those in the UK have a newer version. Uh, I think it's 2.62 or 2.66. I don't really know what changes are. It's not advertised anywhere on the website and it's not on any in any of the articles that Bravo usually shares online. So it would be great if it was something there. How does the coffee? How does it make the coffee? Uh, that's that's usually the um, the question everybody has on mine. It does an okay job for a for a uh, semi or super automatic machine. It does uh, a good job with the tools that they bundle. So so you get your standard dual spout. Uh, Porta filter. I really don't know why you get two spouts with such a limited space here to put uh, to put your drinks. Maybe if you just use espresso shots, uh, shot glasses, that works. But if you want to put like uh, two mugs or let's pick up one of these that we make usually our lattes in, uh, two of them won't fit. So uh, keep that in mind. And that's because of the uh, the grinder assembly, which which takes a majority uh, majority of space uh, here. It's also not very tall, so if you want to do uh, tall um, tall drinks, well, you can't necessarily put on um, a taller glass, a glass <laughs> and make yourself like an iced coffee. So, uh, yeah, uh, maybe I'm nitpicking here, but at that point you just you just add a regular shot glass or a smaller uh, cup over there, make your coffee over there, and then pour it into into another vessel. Aside from that, everything is okay. Now, inconsistency in, in grinding, uh, that's often either a problem with the beans, which you know that even if you go to a local roaster and they give you uh, beans, not all of them will be alike and some of them will be better roasted than others. This thing happens. I recommend from time to time when you're, when you're putting beans into the hopper, Pour them into uh, another container first and make sure there's no rocks or, or basically unprocessed beans that are still very, very hard. That might affect the actual burrs. Um, aside from that, I do recommend uh, cleaning them from uh, time to time. Thankfully, there's only one burr uh, assembly that you remove, so there are not two anymore. So the process of cleaning is a little bit easier. Machine also comes with a magnetic tool that allows you to remove uh, the fan, the tamping fan. This thing can be interesting because you can see even if you purge some grinds, it always leaves a gram or two over there. Uh, so for those that like to measure with the scale, well, sometimes you're not gonna get your 18 grams, you might get 18.1, although this machine likes to output a lot more, uh, around 22 grams. In the end, to, uh, for me and my family, it doesn't really matter all that much, as long as the coffee is not sour or it comes overly watery. So this is what you get normally in a box. Uh, you can notice here, it doesn't have the basket here because I'm using it for something else. With the previous machines, we were focusing with, um, on making our coffee using naked portafilters. Um, just for uh, simplicity, ease of, ease of use, uh, quite a show when you actually make a coffee and you can see it's pouring down nicely. Uh, but also for cleaning, uh, these can get relatively difficult to clean at times, although there's no plastic inserts, uh, insert in these anymore, so it's a little bit easier. But just separating often the, the basket from the assembly can be a challenge. Uh, I don't recommend using a sharp knife or I just recommend using some, some kind of dull instrument to kind of separate the two halves uh, because you can see there's a wire on each side. It's snug. It has to be snug because you're attaching it to the group head. You don't want it to remain, uh, to remain over there, uh, which happened to me a few times with older machines and third-party IMS baskets. Uh, the fit wasn't quite snug. But what this video will be mostly about is the accessories that I got. So we're gonna move to some of the new things that I have here. I'm gonna move the spoon aside. These two guys, I'm gonna give them a close up first. 
So this is recently released. No, I can't tell if it's recently released or it's been there for a while, but these are part of the Breville Craft series. They're a naked portafilter uh, handle and a tamper. It's very nice quality. The handle is, I, I presume it's wooden with a, with a nice stamp uh, in the back. Uh, good weight, um, stays in the hand very, very good. It's a very secure, tight fit when attached. And also there, uh, tamper. Uh, nothing special, but it kind of gives you a little scale, if I get it in focus, of the, uh, of the force applied to, uh, to tamp your um, basket. So I can press it down all the way, I believe, to 10 kilos. It's a nice little thing, and definitely it's a must. If you switch from a uh, traditional uh, portafilter uh, to the naked one. Uh, why is that? Well, because the fan that tamps the, uh, distributes and, and, and tamps the, um, the coffee in a grinder assembly, uh, I think it has a fixed uh, height. I know you can adjust it yourself by removing it, and there's a spring over there. Um, but it's less than ideal, because then if you keep switching back and forth between the two, uh, uh, the two porta filters, you're never going to get the, the height quite right. So we decided to keep it at uh, standard for this particular uh, porta filter and to make our coffees with this one. So I'm going to attach it right now. And when it comes to distributing coffee, so just simply attaching any type of uh, porta filter to the machine will probably cause enough vibration to drop some of the grinds that were previously uh, uh, after the previous drink, they will still fall into the basket. So this time it's not much. Sometimes can be a little bit more depending on how much actually stays there. So let me just attach it right now. So I'm gonna run the program uh, to do the grind. I'm currently at setting 18, uh, which became our default for the coffee we are using. Um, what I'm gonna add here is once you dive your coffee, and you, you don't want extra nonsense from the machine, you know what, do yourself a favor, go back to the settings and just flip off barista guidance. It's gonna prevent you from getting those obnoxious notifications of constantly adjusting um, adjusting the, um, uh, the, the grind if the coffee comes either too slow or too fast. Once you get a feel of how, you, how your uh, grinds and how your beans are working in the machine, you can control it better yourself. Uh, the one good thing to remember where barista guidance does help is if you switch to cold espresso or cold brew, obviously you need to adjust the uh, um, adjust the, the knob for a more coarser um, output. And then of course you have to go back. So the machine won't tell you that if, if, you, if you disable the uh, barista guidance. Again, Depending on who you are, you can use the machine however you want. We decided to turn it off. So let me run the uh, let me run the program, and you're gonna see what happens here in a moment. Oops, <laughs> you have to select the drink first. So what are we expecting here is the coffee won't be properly tamped. Uh, why is that? It's because there's a height difference between the two porta filters. Going to a naked one, I believe, uh, places the basket a little bit lower, uh, where the fan just simply cannot reach. So you're going to see it, that it's uh, kind of chaotic. And yes, it's, it's definitely not distributed properly, although the amount of coffee seems to be okay. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use the tamper to kind of fix that. I'm not gonna do it on camera. Uh, I believe it's a disadvantage of doing these myself and not having a head cam, but I'm just gonna quickly do a short tamp with the new tamper 
um, of the camera and get back to you. And we are back. Uh, so this is treated puck right after using the tamper. It's a very, very satisfying force. Uh, some of the some of the tampers that I use for um, what company was that? Uh, Crema Coffee or something else? Uh, correct me in the in the comments below. There are a few third-party tampers that have a, an accessory uh, suite available, including their handles and everything else, that require either a lot more force or it's not as smooth in operating. This one is a very very smooth and satisfying tamp. And it did create a very nice, uh, good foundation for me uh, to make coffee. So we're gonna run this one. And we're gonna see how it looks. Now I'm at 18 and this is actually the first time I'm tamping this coffee uh, with this tamper. So I'm not sure if 18 will be enough or we're gonna have to go uh, a little bit lower. Actually, coarser. <laughs> so let's see how that goes. Let's put a cup. And we're gonna check the extraction. Pre-infusion started and I'm waiting now. We are at six seconds. That looks pretty good. Let's see how long it's gonna run for. It might run just a little bit too short, but there's no channeling. Oh, very minimum channeling. It doesn't make a mess. And we have finished at 27 seconds. I'm sorry it's not showing that on the screen. That number just disappeared. And here we have the coffee. It is nice and creamy. That's not bad. So I might have to, um, I might have to actually go a little bit uh, finer, maybe to uh, to 17 to uh, to get 28 to 31 seconds and maybe a little bit less challenging. But that actually went very, very well, and I'm actually very, very happy. Um, some of you said, you don't need a puck sucker. Well, <laughs> the sucker is great, actually. By the way, some of the third-party uh, naked portal filters have difficulty attaching. You can feel like it's grinding when it's, uh, when it's latching, or it requires you to hold the machine because the machine will just slide out. This one is relatively problem-free. Yeah, puck sucker. Perfect when you have kids or animals and you don't wanna just go over your uh, uh, knock, uh, knock box or even worse, go over your trash can and just do the knock, 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 waking up everybody. So this is pretty okay. So once we finish running, this one you can tell it's basically full. What I actually recommend doing, actually before making a coffee, is to preheat the, the group head and the pour the filter itself by just running a full program. Now, if you're also a fan of preheating your cups, at that point you can actually place in an empty cup and just let the, let the program complete. During that time, once the water completes the, the, the cycle, you can prepare your puck, you can do the grinding, tamping, um, and when you're ready to pour the drink, just discard the water from the cup. The cup, the cup will be already nicely preheated and you're ready for the coffee. So, so there are, you know, there are options there. Obviously, if you just wanna clean things up, double tap. Uh, this became available, I believe, in one of the 2.0 software updates. It's great because it does it for a, for a quick moment. Um, a little note on discharging of the old uh, old beans. Uh, it does a little bit too much to me. Um, you can you can tell that the output will be a little bit too much. This is just a purge. It 
it's a little more than what I would like to see, but uh, let me just bring it up in more room focus. Overall, it's okay. Still, I have no complaints uh, for the for the milk frothing uh, and, and texturing. That's not really a problem. Although I do recommend uh, sticking to dairy milk if you can. I know there are options uh, where you can go to uh, dairy, almond, soy, or oat. Uh, your mileage will vary how good that's gonna be. Uh, those other non-dairy milks have often problems with, with getting the, a good microphone. If you really wanna get, get a great microphone, use the machine in manual mode. But if you, if you have to, if you have to use, um, if you have to use the machine smarts to do it for you, I would probably recommend sticking, sticking to dairy and uh, full fat. That's gonna ensure uh, a proper creaminess a, um, without much separation when you, when you end up stirring the milk, it's not gonna separate too much and become too watery. Uh, that's basically it. I wanted to keep it short, but geez, again, 20 minutes. Sorry, guys. Um, if you have any additional questions regarding the machine, if I miss something, please ask in the comments and I'll be happy to answer some of them. Thanks and see you again soon.